Good morning, everyone. Uh, my uh, presentation is uh, a project that I uh, did for my doctoral dissertation in sociology, focusing on Marian piety. So, and in 2014, in collaboration with um, another colleague working on communication and new media, uh, Dr. Cheryl Soriano, we, we um, came up with a study uh, about how uh, pieties, no, uh, popular religion, no, is uh, transformed when it is in the when it is brought no, to to uh, the online platform. So my presentation for today, understanding mediated piety in Philippine modern popular religion, situates uh, the practice of uh, uh, rituals and prayers addressed to a divine figure. Uh, in the context of um, new technologies. No? So, uh, next slide, please. The discussion that I will be having today focuses on three uh, major highlights of that, that uh, I have learned in the course of that uh, research. No? So, the notion of mediated piety. Second is uh, devotional authenticity. And third, translocality. But before that, before we go into that, I would like to offer you a, a sort of like a context no? uh, as to how um, we have arrived at a um, nuanced understanding of these three um, major concepts, which I will be discussing today. Next slide, please. The first is uh, regarding the paradox that concerns what we call online. Because um, studies on popular religion will usually um, uh, pit off, no? like uh, place popular religion alongside more institutional forms or more liturgical forms of uh, piety and practice. Saying that while most of the institutionalized liturgical practices in Christianity and in other religions are mediated through the hierarchy, through the, for example, through the action of the priest. Popular religion is more direct. You know? uh, scholar Michael Carroll actually says that popular religion is a direct contact with the sacred through materiality of, uh, of icons, through um, pilgrimages, you know? performances involving the body and uh, certain sanctifications of time. But what happens no, when that direct experience of the sacred is brought to online technologies, no, which again gives uh, racist questions about uh, the directness of the practices because this time, we have an online platform that mediates that practice. So we will, uh, we will look into that later. The second is, uh, the study is um, framed no? uh, in, the, in an exemplary case of urban shrine-based Catholic devotion. So first, it is um, an exemplary case. No? When, when one wants to study popular religion in the Philippines, there are actually many options to choose from. You know? So the more popularly known um, icons and practices and devotions would include Santo Nino you know? or the Black Nazarene. You know? Or uh, these two will be the, the biggest you know, in the Philippines. I it, it when I was starting my my research, no, I intentionally um, distanced myself uh, from those, uh, primarily because there are already several studies done on them. I did a study on the shrine of our Mother of Perpetual Health in Baclaran in Paranaque City. Now, so the the choice was really because. Um, I did not find at that time a an extended study of the of, of, of the perpetual health devotion, and I was also um, 
oriented to that devotion earlier. No? So it's an exemplary case in the sense that among the hosts of a uh, Catholic popular religion in the Philippines, uh, there are, I, I used certain criteria in arriving at the choice of uh, our mother of perpetual health. No? In the, um, the our mother perpetual health devotion is a, a, a late, somewhat a late comer. No? If we pit it off against the more Hispanic forms of Marian piety, this was introduced in 1906 when the Redemptorists entered the Philippines. And um, the devotion to our mother of perpetual health start in, started in Baclaran only in 1932. And uh, the, what gave uh, prominence to the, our mother of perpetual health devotion is the novena. We, they call it the perpetual novena devotions, which only started in 1948 after the Second World War. So um, it's relatively recent, no? and because of that, it has a different character if you compare it with other forms of Marian piety, like the, the, more, the, the ones that were brought by the Spanish missionaries in the 16 and 1700s. It's also urban, uh, not intentionally, because when Baclaran Shrine started in 1932, it was actually not an urban area. No? In a way, urbanization caught up with it. And, uh, and the shrine had to contend with urbanization issues, no? which I documented in, in, in my dissertation. It's also shrine-based because uh, there are many forms, actually, of exercising the devotion, of performing the devotion. But I focused more of what happens in the shrine no, as a privileged uh, platform, a privileged uh, place to conduct the devotion. So that's the second. The third is, what is, I think, um, peculiar no, to, to, to the perpetual health devotion in the context of the other devotions in Catholic Philippines is that there are epistolary mechanisms of devotional maintenance. What does that mean? Epistolary mechanisms is the writing of letters. So um, in, in the perpetual health devotion, uh, devotees write a lot of letters. So they would write at least two, one letter of petition and one letter of thanksgiving. No? So in the course of time, the Redemptorist Fathers have actually collected some of these letters. And I have had access to letters as early as 1948 until um, around the time I was doing my dissertation in 2008. And uh, as I continued studying it, I even like, extended uh, the, the analysis of the letters beyond 2008. So th those are the contexts. No? But I would also like to, to like, introduce reflections about how online piety is utilized in the context of the present pandemic. It suddenly became a very prominent form of devotion and uh, worship. Next slide, please. Okay, so what's, it, what's with medi mediated piety? No? The central issue that I want to um, discuss here is the impact of online religion in the social character of worship. No? So there, I, I would like to emphasize the term online religion no? because um, scholars on um, religion and media no? make a distinction between religion online and online religion. Religion online mean, simply means that denominations, churches, mosques, and religious communities would simply place uh, a website of their community on the internet so that uh, outsiders can be guided about, about the times where worship, no? the address. No? It's, it's more of like informa information dissemination. That is religion online. Online religion is the performance of religious rituals in virtual space. So the, the, the issue that I want to really tackle is the impact of online religion, which means religion practice in the virtual space in the social character of worship. 
which uh, yields uh, questions like, in what ways may online religion enhance existing relationships or create new enduring relationships? We're dealing with a different platform. So in what ways can the, that platform enhance existing relationships, create new enduring relationships, or destroy existing relationships if possible? No? Or if, uh, the second question is, under what conditions may online religion be conceived as authentic or dystopic expressions of religious practice? So that is um, the, the two central questions that I would like to deal with in this, uh, in this uh, presentation. Next slide, please. When I studied, uh, when we studied uh, per, the perpetual health devotion uh, in 2014, in its online, um, in its online platforms, no, um, the first thing we had to look at is the website. No? The website that you see now is the website now. It, it was a very different website in 2014. But I'd like to call your attention to like um, the multimedia resources that the, the shrine offers. No? So like uh, someone who wants to perform the devotion can resort to videos of, uh, the, of the, novena, uh, the novenas in the shrine. They can write letters online. They can, um, they can follow the novena through live stream and forms like this. This was done even before the pandemic. No, um, we will discuss it later in translocality. But uh, what I'd like to uh, focus here is um, the readiness no, of this particular mode of devotion in employing or using the online space, no, even encouraging it. Next slide, please. In the context of the pandemic, we have uh, communities like um, parishes no, conducting virtual uh, coverage of their religious services. So this is an example of uh, the way of the cross done by Santuario de San Vicente de Paul. No? Um, it's, uh, it's, on in, it's, it's uh, live streamed on Facebook. The other one, next slide please, is the use of um, online masses no? in the context of the pandemic because uh, of the limitations of physical movement. Okay, so uh, next slide, please. In the, in, in, in the study of, uh, of these particular forms of religious practice, I found that mediated pieties, uh, such as the ones that I mentioned to you, intend to simulate offline religious experience. And I'd like to call attention to the word simulate. What does it mean to simulate? To simulate is initiate the appearance of, or character of something. And it does, uh, it, among social scientists and philosophers, we are immediately reminded of Jean Baudrillard's notion of simulacra in his conception of like uh, in the, in the postmodern world, everything becomes hyper real. And the simulacra is like a copy of the real wherein you cannot distinguish what is real and what is the copy. So here, um, there is still an allusion to um, the distinction between the offline, which is supposed to be the, the main uh, practice, and the mediated ones in the, online, in, in, in the online platforms. The second is the role of innovation and imagination. You know? um, uh, Dr. Tiatko mentioned earlier that contestations in popular piety are... Uh, are present, no? Uh, it's not simply a, a, an acceptance of uh, what is imposed. In online popular religion, that appears, no? In how devotees innovate and imagine the practices differently, uh, different from the intention of the framers or the regulators of piety. And third, uh, mediated piety reconfigures notion of time, togetherness, hierarchies, and regulation, no? giving, um, giving a, uh, a diff, uh, uh, an alternative things of time, for example. So it's not bound by um, a specific time because you can always access it. 
togetherness now what forms of togetherness are are available no if um you meet in a virtual platform not only amongst devotees but between the devotee and the divine figure in this context the virgin mary uh, as um, venerated as an icon no hierarchies no how are hierarchies respected and subverted in virtual space no so for example you have um because of innovations no um devotees can perform the rituals in a different way no in different ways that uh, are not anticipated uh, by the by the by the ones who produce you know, the offline religious contents no next slide please the next is about authenticity now, authenticity refers to the quality you no know, of of devotional um practice that is centered on human and not merely ritual considerations and factors. A word about authenticity. Uh, is authenticity in our context when it is used by social scientists a value judgment of a practice? No? So because scientists to actually make value judgments about whether a practice is authentic or not. But uh, I don't use authenticity in that sense. No, what we mean is that in the experience of the devotees, how do they account for the authenticity of their own experience? And it is here that the interiority, no, which is um, which is um, highlighted in our use of loob and kalooban, is an important arbiter of devotional authenticity. Which means to say that uh, it has to resonate personally to the individual. For the, for, for the devotion to be authentic, it has to be interior. It's not merely ritual, but it is something that is internalized no? uh, in the context of a person's life. Now, that's why it's a mechanism for the personalization of religious experience. Next slide, please. So in the letters, in the devotional letters that I've read, some 900 of them, the devotees, whether using the offline or the online platforms, uh, use um, loob or kalooban as a central theme of their devo devotion to, to the Virgin Mary. No? They speak of utang na loob. They speak of pagbabalik loob. No? They speak of kapayapaan ng loob. No? And this, does not, uh, this did not uh, differ significantly whether they use use online or offline platforms. So I, to the, regarding the question, is loob still a significant indicator of devotional authenticity if it is practiced online? The answer is yes. No? There is still that same uh, expectation of interiority, no? even if the, the, the platform is already online. So the, the expectation for authenticity stays. No? So next slide, please. Translocality. No? So this one from the authenticity of loob. No? Translocality is the, the, the um, notion that revolves around mobility, connectedness, networks, places, localities, and locals, flows, travel, transfer, and circulatory knowledge. It is important to discuss translocality in, in online uh, pieties because it challenges defined boundaries and one of the defined boundaries that I have dealt with is the shrine because the shrine is physical space when um, the, the devotion was placed online it somewhat challenged the defined the defined boundaries of a shrine no so and uh, particularly with the management of identities in the context of movements and the use of media technologies in the circulation of knowledge. So how devotees handle uh, knowledge and practices. No? So like it has to assume a translocal flavor. It's not just about the shrine. In a way, the shrine has to be transposed elsewhere so that its experience would appear much, much closer to the devotees, even if in the absence of the of going to the actual
actual physical shrine. So, because the issue here is that if the boundaries are becoming more fluid and the field becomes less geographic, how are ties maintained? No? So, it is in this context, next slide please, that notions of pakikipagkapwa, no? uh, kapwa, or the, 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 the near other, no? figures prominently in, uh, in, in um, online popular religion. No? Specifically, with regards to the uh, expression of um, uh, the relationship between the divine figure and the devotee. And online and social media platforms redefine the notions of closeness and acts as a bridge for new ways of performing the devotional relationship. And lastly, online religion keeps those physically unable to be present, physically present, to be part of a broader imagined community of devotees. So it allows the devotees to kumbaga, cover for the, the distance no? and the, the, the porosity of the boundaries that exist between the shrine and outside the shrine. So where the physicality or the geographic uh, entity is somewhat downplayed, the devotees um, compensate by uh, alluding to personal networks found in Pakikipagkapwa. No? To conclude, next slide please. So just to like respond to the questions that I have posed earlier. No? So the first uh, insight that I'd like to offer is that uh, there is an active role of the internet and social media technologies in crafting the continued relevance of religion. So here we say that um, instead of uh, online platforms somewhat downgrading religion as a mere simulacra or like copy of the real, um, we distance from that interpretation and say that actually internet and social forms for enacting authentic, you know, perceived to be authentic forms of piety. The second is that the social dimension of loob and kapwa in our Filipino cultural psychology conditions devotees' engagements with institutional agents. So it, uh, it, the loob and kapwa are, um, are uh, means for the devotee to continue exercising connections out within between himself or herself and other agents in the de performance of devotions. And lastly, live stream of prayers and online facilities for expressing religious sentiments do not negate the authenticity and reciprocity of religious practice. It's just that methodologically speaking, we will have to find a way you know, of, uh, start of looking, what do we look into when we want to study authenticity and reciprocity? In the context of the popular health devotion, there are the letters. That, that's why the pandemic you, the, the use of online and media technologies in the context of the pandemic will be a challenge because what will be used as indicators of authenticity and reciprocity, which can be open for further discussion later. Thank you very much and good morning to everyone.